ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Now, I've been a big Wu Tang fan since high school. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Wu Tang Clan, you know what I'm saying? Cream. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Cash rules, everything around me. Cream. You know, so I, I've I've had literally every Wu Tang CD. Method Man was my favorite. ODB, RZA, Jizza, You God, Ghostface. My favorite Ghostface song is the song with Mary J. Blige, and I got a chance to meet her on Mother's Day, so that was awesome. I posted the picture on my Instagram. The song is called "All That I Got Is You." That is my song to this day. It plays on my iPod or whatever them things is called, my Apple Play. I love that song. And so to hear that he's a deadbeat father and has just not been in his child's life for up to 15 years is insane to me. You know, I remember ODB screaming, Wu-Tang is for the children. And now we're finding out that a child of Wu-Tang was not for a Wu-Tang member. That's insane to me. Even with ODB having all them kids, he had a bunch of damn kids, bunch of baby mamas. All his kids, they, they don't have nothing bad to say about him. They said he was there as much as he could be, you know, in between traveling. So Ghostface Killer's son has taken to social media to air out their family's grievances. He's very upset at the treatment that he's gotten from his father. Okay. I also believe it's the fact that his son is gay too. I think that's an issue for the dad. I didn't know he had a gay son and maybe that's part of the reason why he's staying away from him, which to me is ridiculous. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So that's his son right there. So we're going to go through these slides. Um, so it says Ghostface Killer has been branded a deadbeat dad by his gay son who aired out the Wu-Tang Clan legend for allegedly neglecting him and his siblings for more than 15 years. Ghostface son is Infinite Coles. He took to Instagram on Tuesday, May 24th to post a lengthy condemnation of the rap legend of his rap legend father, claiming he is the full definition of a deadbeat. So he says, I have never been the type to go online and talk about my personal life, my family, or my emotions. However, today I'm giving an inside look into my broken heart because I'm feeling more lost and hopeless than I have ever been. At Real Ghostface Killer, I didn't want to do this, but at this point, I'm tired of keeping quiet to save our reputation. I'm tired of the pain. My heart has been aching and longing to be loved by you, my father. For way too long. So since you are unreachable, perhaps this will get your attention. I haven't had a full conversation with you or seen you in over 15 years. You haven't once tried to reach out to me to see how I'm feeling or how I'm doing. I have messages that literally show me reaching out to you and receiving no response for over a decade. The legend that you all love, Ghostface Killer, is the definition of a deadbeat. Dad, you let us live with Dad, you let us live without lights, gas, or even communication from you for years. You have all the coins, yet you allowed my uncles to clean up your mess. I have lived in a shelter for almost a year in 2020 during COVID, and you haven't reached out once to help me or see if I was even alive. Your daughter is mentally ill. You haven't even come to make sure she's okay or even get her help. You do not give a damn about your children. It's time to lay this shit out on the table. Growing up, your cold shoulder made me scared of not only myself, but of the world. I was never comfortable around you or my brothers when I was a kid, but at least my brothers grew to accept me on their own. I felt unprotected my entire life. I couldn't even fully chase my dreams because I was so afraid of who I was and just kept trying <clears throat> to make everyone happy and be someone I wasn't, even though it was obvious I was pretending. 
He wrote a lot. I need some water. Then he goes on to say, for many years, you made me hate myself until I developed the courage to snap the fuck out of it and realize that there was nothing wrong with me, but there's everything wrong with you. I can't even say you're only a deadbeat to me because I'm gay, because you're a deadbeat to all of your kids, some more than others. But what I've been seeking is an answer to why. Is it because your father turned your back on you? Man, that's crazy. Because I'm thinking about the lyrics to that song. If y'all have not listened to that song, All That I Got Is You, for this man to turn around and do this to his children, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. Um, he goes on to say, is it because your father turned your back on you? Why do you love everyone but your kids? It's backwards. It's ugly. It's hurtful. And it's humiliating. I'm tired of you ignoring us. I've, I'm tired of you acting like we don't exist. I'm tired of you putting everyone else on but your kids. What makes this more shameful is the fact that you now have grandchildren and can make up and can make up for lost time with us and you still choose not to. This shit makes no sense. For the people reading this, I really want y'all to understand I'm not looking for attention or sympathy from anyone. I'm looking for attention from my father, the one who brought me into this world. Why have kids if you're not going to take care of them? Daddy, we need you. Not your money, your heart, your attention, your love. I hope you change your ways and realize that you have some beautiful, talented children out here with deep voids in their heart because you have been missing. You've ghosted us for far too long. Mm. And these are his children right here. I think this is the, the one that's writing, this little one here. Looks like that's the daughter. Those are the other ones. That's sad. So then he posted some text messages and said, peace, dad. And you know what I loved about these text messages? If you guys are Wu-Tang fans, you guys know that's how they talk. That, you know, the black man is the son. And, you know, you're the queen, mother earth. Peace, God. You know what I mean? So the fact that he writes his dad like that, I, I just was like, wow. But he says, peace, dad. Because that 5% are talk. Um, can you please check in on us sometimes? I hope you're feeling okay and being healthy. But I love you always. And again, please take care of yourself and reach out a little more question mark because he's not getting any response he says peace just checking in then he says i was looking for you i want to say my peace then he wrote again peace dad this was in september he wrote again in november peace dad happy thanksgiving can you give me a call when you can february peace dad it's infinite please give please give mom a call asap they took xenox oh, Xenon from us, dad. We don't know what to do. Momo told the people she was going to hurt the baby. They took her. You came to Staten Island yesterday and didn't even feel the need to check on Mahogany and see how she's doing. I told you numerous times that she's not well. She needs help. What is it going to take for you to check on us like we do? Like, do we have to die in order for you to reach out? I really need to know because this is really hurtful seeing everyone post you, but your kids don't even know you was here. Peace, your daughter is bipolar and schizophrenic, dad. She needs help. It's not easy over here, please reach out. Then he says again, this was in June. Peace, just checking if you got my messages, it's really important. June again, happy Father's Day. Wish we had a better relationship, but it's cool. I love you no matter what, have a great day. And then he finally replies back after a whole year on Father's Day. And he says, Salam. Yeah, I know. Me too. Thank you. I love you too. Be safe wherever you are. Be safe wherever you are. Let that sink in. Be safe wherever you are. I couldn't imagine saying that to my child. Why don't you know where your children are? Be safe wherever you are means that you have no idea where they are. 
I'm just, I'm blown away. Cause like I said, as a Wu-Tang fan, Wu-Tang is for the children. Um, but this Wu-Tang member is definitely not for his children. And I see a lot of people saying, um, it's probably the mom's fault. The mom probably put him through hell and back. And let's just say maybe the mom was a shitty mom, shitty wife, or baby mama. This man is rich, famous, part of a legendary group. He has the status and money to go get all those children and have those children live with him. Is that not what d Way did? Did he not take those children from Savan and get full custody of those boys and take those boys with him? Ghostface Killer could have did the same thing if he really wanted to be a father to those children. So I'm not buying that. And I'm also tired of people saying, well, he's grown. What do you want him to do? You guys are grown now. You guys are grown. I'm sorry, but I didn't know that once you're grown, you just stop being a parent. Your kids will forever be your baby, no matter how grown they get. They're still your kids. I got a grown son. We were in the club together this weekend. When girls were coming up to me, asking about my son, go talk to him. That's still my child. I don't want to hear about who checking for my son. Go talk to him. Don't come talking to me about my son. You know, just because you're grown, you're still your parents' baby. You know what I'm saying? My mom still checks on me, knows my whereabouts, is checking in on me. Are you good? How's everything going? How are the tea sippers? Because I'm her child. You don't stop being a parent once your child turns 18. They need you for life. And the thing that a lot of these men don't understand is that one day you're going to grow old and you have had no relationship with your children. Who do you think is going to take care of you? You might be a legend, but remember, Black Rob was also a legend. Who was by his bedside when he was dying? I didn't see a bunch of children. I just saw a homeboy. So understand at one point in time, you can get older. And it always sucks when parents try to reach out to their adult children and they want people near them when they're dying and they're going through cancer and they're going through these treatments and they're scared. But a lot of times these children, they won't show up because you didn't show up for them as their parent. Ask people who work in nursing homes. How many old men and women are in nursing homes and the only people they have visiting them is when the next nurse comes in to clock in for her shift. Not nan child, not nan grandchild. That's because those people, just because you're old doesn't mean that you're innocent. What did you do in your youth? How did you treat people? How did you treat your family? How did you treat your kids? All that comes back to you. So while he's while y'all keep saying these kids are grown, who cares? He has to grow old one day, so he should care. Would you rather be in a in a situation where you can go live with your children and they take care of you, and your children are your caretakers, rather than them sticking you in a nursing home? Because most parents who end up going to go live with their family and their children become their caretakers, they tend to live longer. They're happier. There are several caretakers that I follow on social media. One is a, uh, I want to say he's Filipino. He takes care of his grandmother. Me and my mom follow him. Sweet, sweet young man. He's like 22 years old. Takes care of his grandmother. There's another guy. His name is Dan. He's an older white gentleman. His father has like Alzheimer's. He used to be a doctor. And they're his caretaker. And it's between him and his brother, Frank. And I watch their shorts all the time. And that has taught me how amazing, it shows how amazing that father was, that both the sons are fighting to take care of him. That they, you know, I think Monday through Wednesday, he's with one son, then the rest of the week, he's with the other son. That shows how much of a great father he was. That shows how much of a great grandmother, great grandmother, no pun intended, she was to that great grandchild that he's taking care of her. It's not easy to be a caretaker. It's a lot of work and nobody wants to watch their parents deteriorate. Most people who are stuck in nursing homes 
are there because of their own volition are there because their family don't really want to have too much to do with them because when they were able-bodied when they were healthy they were nasty to their family they were nasty to their kids they were deadbeats so y'all gotta really watch how you treat your children watch how you treat kids in general because like i always tell y'all you never know who that child's going to be in the future i was the black sheep of the family people talked about me like a dog but look where i'm at today so watch how you treat your children. This situation is so sad. It's so sad. This is from what the vibe I'm getting from that message. That's not a young man who's looking for attention. He's not a young man who's just trying to go viral. That is a young man who wants a relationship with his father. And like he said, initially he thought it was because he was gay. But then he also is watching how the father deals with the other siblings. Just a deadbeat. So a lot of y'all saying, well, you know, he's a five percenter. They don't, you know, they're not down with the gay lifestyle. Well, what about the straight children? All his kids ain't gay. All his kids aren't running around in a dress. Why is he not there for the straight kids? Why is he not there for the bipolar daughter? No excuse. You had that child, regardless of what, what they choose to do behind closed doors, that's still your child. That's still your child. So I'm, I'm not buying that. 5% or not, that's still, his, that's still his blood. And the fact that he wasn't there to raise those kids is insane to me when he had the means to do it. It's one thing to be a deadbeat because you're broke. You're going from job to job. You can't hold down the job. You got an addiction. But it's another thing when you're choosing to be a deadbeat and you have the means. That's even worse when you have the means and you're purposely doing things like this. So I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm sad by that. Because again, this is the same man who made the song, All That I Got Is You, an ode to his mother. We used to play that all the time on Mother's Day. An ode to his mother, talked about how the father walked out, how he had a brother with muscular dystrophy. And they had to help the mother take care of them. It's such, it's a very, very deep song. It's one of my favorite Ghostface Killer songs. And then to know that this is how you repay back your mother's legacy by being a deadbeat and continue the deadbeat cycle is sad. So hopefully he'll come out and explain himself, you know, but I see a lot of people excusing him because he's a legend. Just because somebody's a legend, that doesn't mean that you can't hold them accountable. Two things can be right at the same time. He's a legend. I'm a huge fan of Wu-Tang. That's still one of my favorite songs that he's ever put out. But apparently he's a deadbeat. So multiple things can be fact. We don't have to ignore this because we like this. So yeah, I think it's sad. I think it's if you sad. want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.